it is not Trinidad and Tobago. Or if you were born here, I should say. Uh, if you were not born here, uh, if you were born elsewhere and you are here, then there are requirements we will have under the Immigration Act and you have to provide evidence of, the, of that. Uh, and then you can be registered as an elector. For a non-national to vote in a general election, you would have to have been a Commonwealth citizen and you would have to have made the prescribed, have the prescribed period in Trinidad and Tobago of at least one year and of course two months in the electoral district in which you are registered to vote. The persons who were registered by the Ministry of National Security are not eligible to vote. That registration was completely outside of the remit of the Election and Boundaries Commission. We had nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with the list we maintain for an election. In order to be on that list, you have to satisfy the requirements that set out before. Well, in this election, the Commission has decided to allow persons who are in quarantine to be treated as special electors, thereby allowing those persons to vote in the special voting period, which is generally the week before the election. So to be treated as a special elector, persons in quarantine would have had to apply during the period prescribed in law. That period in this election was from the publication of the notice of election, which was done on the 6th of July to nomination day, which was the 17th of July. So persons in quarantine during that period had the opportunity to apply to be treated as a special elector. It therefore means that anyone coming into the country and in quarantine after 17 July could not apply. However, the persons who have applied to be treated as special elector, we will be going into the quarantine facility and allowing these persons to exercise their franchise. Persons who have been in quarantine are still required to vote as special electors. So in other words, once your application to be treated as a special elector has been processed, you have to vote as a special elector. Um, you cannot vote on poll day. Um, however, such persons will see uh, ads in the newspapers and there will be radio ads as well, uh, letting you know of the various locations where we have set up special commission stations, as well as you can vote at the office of the returning officer for the constituency in which you live. It's a, a misconception that a lot of people have that you, you absolutely need the ID card to vote and the reality is that you really don't. If you do not have your ID card with you, uh, you enter the red line in the polling station and so we would uh, verify that your name is on the list of electors and that your um, the registration record card is in the binder at the polling station and that registration record card has a photo of you and once we are able to verify your ID or your identification we allow you to vote. The Constitution says that we must review boundaries not less than two and not more than five years after the previous report we have done. We are to do so so as to keep all the electorate in each of the constituencies within a certain band. So we have to look at the total electorate, come up with an average based on the number of constituencies. And we have to ensure that no constituency is 10% more or 10% less than that average which we've established. If it is, then we are required to adjust the boundaries to ensure that the constituency remains within that limit. And to do so, the Constitution has set out in the second schedule certain parameters, or I should say certain guidelines as to how we are, what we are to consider in terms of adjusting the boundaries. Our system is permanent, personal, and continuous. So wherever you are registered, that is where you are allowed to vote, no place else. And you can only be registered um, for the purposes of the parliamentary election in one place, or at one location, or one residence. So, one vote. When someone comes to register with the Election and Boundaries Commission, and they say their address is at wherever, we send people out into the, into the field to check to see if they are actually living there. 
If they are, they are then registered there. This is a very mobile population. So what happens is someone has registered, they have moved. Someone goes to the address, which is shown on the records held by the Elections and Boundaries Commission, and they say, oh, Mr. X or Ms. Y is not living at that address. And people can say, well, voter pattern or what have you. It's not voter pattern. The person may have simply moved to another election, uh, in another address. And what the representation of the People's Act says is that you cannot move someone off a list. They are still eligible to be elected in that constituency, even if they don't reside in there. And I think the reason the legislation came up uh, was, was drafted like that, was to ensure that people did not lose their constitutional right to vote because they may have moved, but they're still living in the country. They may actually even be still living in the constituency, but in a different address. So that is what um, sometimes creates some confusion when people say, oh, I got a poll card and this person doesn't live here. That's possible because the person may have lived there in, in the past. Well, the, the boundaries of the polling station, or as we call it, the polling station limit, is established by the presiding officer. And that is important um, particularly for two reasons. One is that persons within the polling station limit at 6 p.m. Once you're in the line at 6, the presiding officer establishes who is the last person in the line within the limit and such persons are allowed to vote. I'm sure people recall seeing on election the mock polling stations and those mock polling stations are um, uh, within 100 yards of the polling station limit and that is where uh, political parties or independent candidates tend to set up their mock stations so that that limit is important uh, not only to, to, to establish that 100 yard demarcation but also in terms of voting particularly uh, as we head towards the close of the poll which is at six o'clock persons must be within that limit uh, to be allowed to vote. It's not really uh, a matter for the Election and Boundaries Commission. This is a matter for the government of the day who will make that determination. Myself and members of the commission and even the chief election officer, we have all been members of observer groups. Uh, so we understand what's involved and we do attempt to assist. Uh, once they are coming in, the observer groups normally ask one to meet with the commission and we always meet with them and they ask for information. And we don't have a problem with that, we provide the information. We have a proud history of carrying out elections here efficiently and very fairly. Uh, and actually, this is one of the most, I would say, transparent uh, elections you can get anywhere. And I say transparent because when you look at election night, the parties normally celebrate even before we, we um, know all the final results because it is that transparent a system. Uh, we provide maps and all the data that is required for the observers to successfully conduct an election observer mission. Um, and of course, we also welcome the reports when thereafter. It's almost like feedback uh, in terms of how we have conducted the election. And therefore, um, when, when different eyes or election management experts across the region or in the Commonwealth look at your processes and, and make suggestions and recommendations, this is something that we take very seriously in terms of, you know, how can we better our processes. I would like to urge the electorate when you come out, once you do your part, we have already gone through quite a lot to ensure that this is safe uh, and I can assure you it is safe. So please wear your mask, comply with the directions of the presiding officer and the police officers who will be present. Once you do that, there's nothing for you to fear and this will be a very smooth poll day, just like any other poll day. So please come out and vote. And I look out and I look forward to actually seeing you out there because the commissioners, we are all going to be out there looking and we look forward to seeing the electorate come out and vote. Thank you. A message from the Elections and Boundaries Commission.